on beaches, you know, that, oh, somebody has a portable, they can set up a camera on a beach and take a picture of my wife, you know. Your daughter will send you that to send you a picture of the wife, then. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is another area. This one here is the third green that I was flying. The story behind this one is the golf, we, we were doing this at sunset. It was about seven o'clock at night. This hole faces the west. So I'm flying along and the sun is right in my eyes. And I had this guy here flying. Next thing you know, I have no idea where this bird is. It's gone. I cannot see a thing. Luckily, my wife was with me and the golf course owner was with me. They, they, they were lucky enough to be able to spot it. It had flown for what I must have hit this, the stick. I got nervous. I couldn't find it. Next thing you know, the thing is up like about 300 feet in the air. <laughs> I have no idea where it is. But it happened in like in seconds. It's just like, boom, you're flying along and all of a sudden you're flying in a cloud. And this is how easy it is to lose one of these guys. You run out of radio range, you know, you're flying along, it says, oh yeah, I got you know, good communication. <coughs> Next thing you know, boom, it's gone. You have no idea. It, it keeps on flying until the battery dies. Where it lands, anybody's guess. Now, if you're in a residential area, it could land in somebody's house or in somebody's car or in somebody's kid. So that's why Transport Canada is very leery about legislating the, these these things. Uh, so we go to another one. This is just an aerial shot of my house. We just had a new roof put on, so I wanted to see what the <laughs> roof, how the roofers did. <laughs> if, you, if, if it wasn't on the slide, I can then expand that and, and get right down and see the, in, in, you know, in good detail what the what the roof looks like. And that's just another. This is another shot of high oak golf cars. This is the one I like, it's just the barns in the background. Um, the interesting part about, you go back when, Tom? Sure. Uh, no, just before the one there, of the golf course. First, I don't know, uh, next one, that one there. Um, this hole here is off the 10th green, uh, but when I first showed it to the golf course owner, and it doesn't show it on here, but it's, it's more down in this area here, where he noticed just from that one aerial shot, I said, oh geez, there's a lot of dead growth along that fairway. We must have missed fertilizing it, or whatever reason there was. So he was able to spot that. And the, the nice thing about being so high up, you can get a good bird's eye view of, of the condition of the, of the grass. And, and that's just, there's my certificate in the gang. And this is a house in just outside of Kingston. He lives on the St. Lawrence. And I was just flying in his backyard. Go ahead. Another shot and there's this house and that's the owner and my wife so you would be just flying manually here would you i'm actually i was flying under gps mode okay. uh in order to fly in gps mode you have to have so many satellites that the receiver can detect and then the nice thing about gps mode is that it's very stable so when I do an input on this, if I'm going to want to go left, I hit the stick and then it returns to center, it'll stop. If you're in 
attitude mode, you do that, the, the inertia, the momentum of, of the bird keeps on going. So uh, even though I've said stop, it just keeps drifting, which is good if you're doing any photographs, aerial photos, you can then pan and just kind of drift along and then take your pictures that way. And that's pretty well it. Are you going to show your scar? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're at Darren's parents' house doing, we're testing. And uh, for whatever reason, we're about three feet off the ground. And the thing just drew off like a lead balloon. There was a <coughs> bit of a, a hill. It hit the hill, bounced, and got me in the leg, and had a nice gash in the leg. Is that like, like that? <laughs> just, this one here will trim your hedges, no problem at all. <laughs> and these are carbon fiber propellers, and they'll slice through anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's. Well, you. Can you just tell us about pricing? Pricing wise, uh, uh, anywhere from uh, this one here. Actually, these two I built from 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 kits. Yeah, this the GGI that we we built this one when I was taking the course at CQFA. Uh, what we did uh, the second week of the course is we actually built these. You get the kit and then the controller, and it, I think, all in all, worked out to about six, seven hundred dollars uh, with the battery and the receiver and everything. This one here, the, I got this, um, the kit um, from China, and thank as bad as we hate China, and they do everything. If it wasn't for them, there'd be no industry because they can crank out carbon fiber tubing and whatever you want cheaply. So you can buy the basic arms and, and the body for a couple hundred dollars and then you equip it with with the controllers and whatever else you want to put on the GPS unit, the camera. This has a little camera. Is the camera uh, Not really. They, they can range anywhere from 50 to $150. GoPro cameras will range. Well, this is the Black Edition, which is, I think you can get them now for about $350, $400. Like they, they, they preset like or do adjust the camera too. Yeah, the, the, you have some flexibility with the GoPro. You can program to do, you know, lighting for you know the white balance and everything. You can you can play with that. Is it yeah. tricky to balance your uh, your blades so that? Uh, yes, that's. Uh, it's not as bad now because uh, a. This company here, 3D Robotics, came out with a with a program where you can uh, will assist you in balancing, and it'll set your gains uh, automatically for you. You you send the bird up and you put it in this in this mode, and then it, it will do the calculations and stabilize it for you. Um, so it does that because you don't have any. Weight distribution on your arms? Yeah, well, it, it'll vary depending on the load that you're carrying. and You try and keep everything, the center of gravity, as close to the center as possible, but um, you start putting on attachments to it and it will, you know, change the balance. Yeah. Is the big uh, tripod the controller for the big one? This? Yeah. No, that's just a monitor. Oh. Yeah. No, I control with the radio. Now, talking about business, I watch usually every Sunday 
two programs that you can see, Horizons and Click, and I don't know which one it was, but in Norway they were using them to deliver medicine to out mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they said it was very, very successful. It yeah. take a day or two to go by boat. Yep, and that's that's where the technology is going. Um, third world countries are using them for uh, environmental purposes, for for poachers, you know, anti poaching uh, deterrence, because uh, that's a big problem in in some of the countries where poachers are going in and to get the ivory. Uh, you could. I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise it. But. <laughs> I'm sorry. No? The range of the big one. It is the same as that, about about three thousand feet. You had a question? Yeah. Uh, have you gotten by the uh, Phantom Two? No, I've never owned a Phantom. Oh, they're they're a good machine. Um, the Inspire is probably a better machine, but it costs you a thousand dollars to. Fifteen hundred dollars more than the the Phantom. There was a TV program that showed uh, with the uh, machine guns. Monitor. Yeah. Did you see that? I, well, I saw a YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Good enough to scare you. The latest uh, airplane crash in uh, out out east oh, in Halifax. Um, the uh, RCMP were using drones to. Um, to actually record the accident and take the pictures of the of, of the uh, the flight path and to do reconstruction work. OPP are starting to to use them also for accident reconstruction. Uh, you figure there's a major accident on the 401. It blocks both lanes of highway costs thousands of dollars in economic downtime because everything travels by you know um, by transport they've got to get the goods to where they're going so they're able to now through mapping purposes fly over take the pictures and then reconstruct that accident um, without having then they can clear away the debris and and then they can go back to the office and actually reconstruct what occurred, and then get very That's precise. Like the highway goes down for a day, so. Oh, it would cost millions of dollars. Just wait a couple hours. Yeah, a couple hours, and once they're they've got their their uh, aerial photos, boom, off they go, and away you go. Yes. Summit, yeah. When uh, your few students were protest, protesting, campus police called you and some people with the blue drones mm -hmm. and used them to keep campus. Yeah. For the light, for the oh, yeah, and there's, yeah. For the ringers, for yeah, yeah, there's, there's going to be good and pros and cons about the industry. Um, you're always going to get abuses of any new technology, but uh, hopefully the good will outdo the bad over the long term. I think in a few years people will just accept the fact that these are part of our fabric now. They're, this is where we're going. So are you into this just for the, the fun of it? Or? Uh, I am for the fun of it and also trying to make money. <laughs> I would, I, I'm still seeking my first dollar. <laughs> so if anybody wants to contribute, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Very good.